What up? We're the bottleneck banishers. And for our semester project, we observed Woolies Fish Market in the Strip District. So throughout our time at Woolies, we spent three days there four hour, in four hour increments. And across those three days, we had three main focuses within the store. The first was the hot foods counter because that's one of their big attractions. Uh, the second was the fish counter because a lot of people come in there shopping for their fish. And then finally uh, was the rest of the store. So we went around, took observations of all the other processes to get a better idea of the entire functionality of the store. Uh, so the hot foods counter, uh, here's just some pictures of what it looks like and how uh, the process goes. This is like where they get the food and then it just goes on through. So. so the observation that we saw with this was the lines. Uh, the lines uh, with Andy's sushi and the hot foods conflicted with each other just because they were going in different directions and that just caused a bottleneck within the store and the customers. Uh, the signs, there's not enough signs to show where things are, what uh, to do uh, when in line and all that stuff. Uh, the counter progression is a FIFO, which is good because th so they don't mess up orders or get orders done before certain, uh, previous orders. Uh, workers, they work as a unit, which is good, and they're also cross-trained, which helps that when their station is uh, not as busy, they can go into another station and help out. Uh, the order taker, uh, this, they designate one person to write out the orders and then put it on the tray for uh, the cashier to uh, see once you're checking out. Uh, this is their only bad part is that the writing isn't uh, that legible, which has uh, gives the cashier some trouble when they're reading it. But most of them understand uh, what is written on the order sheet, anyways. Uh, the checkout, uh, there's congestion there because everybody, which is like families or just uh, people in general coming in and out of the checkout, uh, just causes congestion or a bottleneck. So as said, while we were at Woolies, we spent three days there, and each day we took at least some observations of the hot foods counter. We broke up our observations into three main time brackets, and then we did the total time. The first was uh, their time in line. So if there was no line when they entered, obviously this time would be zero. The second was uh, the time from when they ordered to when they actually received their food, and the final time was uh, from when they received their food until checkout. Then we would take averages of each of those to figure out where people are spending the most time and where we can focus on our most improvements. Anything that you see in red, uh, we deem to be approaching 10 minutes or over 10 minutes and that's just too much time for someone to be in that small area. And the only time that that's justified is if someone's or, or, uh, ordering something broiled because that's a 10 minute process. But other than that, you can still see that there are a lot of times that are exceeding uh, what they should be. And this is our final day. And our final day we spent, uh, it was actually the five of us that were in line, so these are these five on five data points. And uh, all of the times averaged 15 minutes and 24 seconds from start to finish. That's just too long. Uh, because this is one of their busiest hours, and so we realize that there's a lot of improvements that need to be done. So uh, talking about those improvements, the first thing that we saw is with those averages, uh, people were spending too much time waiting just from when they get their food to when they check out. And there's only one cash register, as you can see these people right here are waiting, and uh, we actually talked to some of the employees and during their busiest time of the year, which is Fish Fridays and Lent. Uh, they actually do have a second cash register, so it's our official recommendation that they uh, implement that permanently right over here. Uh, and for the lines, they need more distinct lines. Uh, so here, one of our other recommendations is have uh, the both lines go in the same direction and the Andy's sushi line hook around so they can go right into the store. And because the, the entrance is down here, so when people coming are coming into the store, uh, it's all just one flow direction and they're not causing congestion within uh, the hot foods. Uh, this would cause some uh, congestion here with people like trying to uh, get in the line but it's a better uh, solution than having them go in opposite directions. And then they just need more signs uh, just to show what they need, uh, where customers to go, to pay, uh, then or, or to order their food, get their food, and then pay, uh, and there's just other uh, small signs just to help uh, the improvement of the store. And that wraps up Hot Foods. Our secondary focus is the raw fish counter. When observing the raw fish counter, we noticed a few positives as well as some negatives. One of the positives being the fish refill time. Throughout our observations, we noticed a few instances where a customer's order would completely exhaust the display of fish, and it was very impressive. With we were very impressed with the employee's time that it took for the fish display to get completely refilled. I think our maximum time on that was about 55 seconds. Moving on to the negatives, there was a substantial amount of employee idle time. On average, there was about six employee staff behind the raw fish counter, and the most that we observed working at one time was four. So there was always at least two employees idle throughout our observations. Uh, the second negative was the inconsistency. 
Each employee seemed to have their own way to package the fish, which caused a lot of variance in how long it took for them to completely package raw fish and get to the customers. The next was the distance the employees travel. To package raw fish, you need to cover it in wax paper, and they had their wax paper scattered all throughout the back of the fish counter, which caused employees to travel a fairly far distance each time whenever they were going to get the wax paper. And our final negative that we saw was the raw fish preparation. There was, again, just a lot of inconsistency with how raw fish were prepared and some things we noticed with efficiency issues that could cause a lot of uh, time that is unnecessary. So our few recommendations that we have is first to deal with the employee idle time. All of our other recommendations are work in process. So basically everything that we're recommending the employees can do while they're idle to be proactive. Our second suggestion is to train the employees to package the fish the same way. This way it would eliminate the inconsistency which causes unnecessary time when I wait time for the customer. And third is to move the wax paper closer to the counter, which would eliminate the distance travel, which will cut down again on time and employee fatigue because they won't have to be walking all over behind the fish counter. And our last two suggestions are to just pre-cut fish and pre-wrap them, which would eliminate the employee having to wrap them each time and having to weigh them out, which causes a lot of unnecessary time, and as well as cut off the heads of the fish because most of the time, whenever someone would order a whole fish, they would have the heads cut off, which added about 30 seconds to the process each time, so we feel that that can just be eliminated by cutting off heads of the fish. So we're on to the last part of our uh, focus for the project, and we're going to talk about the rest of the store. Now we're going to go to Dan first to talk about the observations. So for other store observations, other than the uh, fish counter and the hot food section, we noticed that there were other hot spots within Woolies that uh, were high points of congestion for customers. So the first spot here, right here, is where the meat department begins. Um, Sam only implemented a splice rack right where that black block is and because of that it would force customers to move through the meat department but we found that more customers were more frustrated trying to move through the meat department especially if they didn't intend to purchase meat in the first place. And then at uh, number four we have the deli cheese uh, counter area. Right there uh, there was a lot of congestion especially when there was someone sampling deli meats and cheeses. Um, because of this people would have to move around them and uh, keep bumping into each other. And then number five, we had the orange juice section, which is Sam Woolley's, uh, probably his favorite display, uh, where he gets to show exactly how they make orange juice and they uh, squeeze it right into the bottle right there. Um, it's great for outreach, but it can cause a bit of congestion. And then at number six, we have the cash registers, where we notice there's a lot of congestion and buildup simply because not enough people can see the empty cashier lines because of a, a large amount of product in the way. So going off of what Dan said on the observations, we the only data we took was in the meat department, and we did two 20-minute time frames to see how many customers would go through the meat department and actually purchase meat. As we see here, there's two really low percentages in both the time frames that we took, and that leads into our recommendations to get rid of the spice rack. Uh, we want to move it because we value the flow of customers through the meat department and the store in general more than forcing them to go through the specific path that Sam Woolley sent them on to maybe purchase meat by forcing them to go through the meat department. So we feel like if we move that, it would be much more valuable to the store. Another recommendation we have is standing signs for the open cash registers. There's a sign hanging above the cashers right now that is barely legible and it's really small and customers don't see it because we didn't see it. Uh, the first time we went through the store before taking an actual picture of it and we feel that if we put standing signs with distinct arrows pointing to all the cash registers that are open customers will know which uh, cash registers are open and they will go to those lines rather than getting backed up all the way into the produce section which we saw several times during our observations um, the next recommendation is to move the chicken display by the cheese counter and we want to do this because beforehand on both sides of the cheese counter, there's three feet available for the customers to get through. And we uh, want to move it there so it can open that up and so the people buying their cheese products won't get backed up into the meat department. Uh, and another recommendation we have is to replace uh, the display at the front of the store for baskets right here. So baskets right now, as of now, are randomly scattered all throughout the store. And this is just random, random spots and this causes congestion that maybe a couple people could get through and help the flow. So we want to put it at the front of the store so the customers can see them. And because this display does not get much attention from a customer's, I don't think once we saw someone pick something out of this display. Um, 
Our last recommendation is to reduce the product in front of the cash registers. So in front of these three cash registers, not only is the sign hanging above it really small and very legible, um, but there's a ton of product there that necessarily doesn't need to be there. Um, there's a ton of space and a lot of the products in boxes. So we feel that if by eliminating that product or reducing some of it, uh, it would be much easier for customers to get into the cash register lines rather than being backed up into the produce section, which backs up the entire store. Uh, these are kind of small ways to help in, uh, increase the flow of customers through the store, um, but we feel that this would definitely help out a lot and um, make more profit for Woolies because customers would want to come back to a place that gets through their customers fast rather than being backed up the entire time. Thanks for watching our presentation.